CFRE attends more than a thousand house fires every year. The tragedy is though that some of these house fires become fatal and these could be avoided. Today we're here with the Nile family to see how we can help. Hi Matt. Hi, how are you going? Good, come on in. Thank you. Hi kids, how are you? Hi, I'm good. That's excellent. Today we're here to check your house box, as you know. Um, the first point I'd like to mention is about doors and deadlocks. Um, you don't have a deadlock on your door, but if you did, I'd suggest that you have a key in there at all times. Um, but also it's important that the family knows where the exit is to the house. Now, as we know, most house fires start in the kitchen, so let's go through there and have a look where their hotspots are in there. Sure, come on through. The first thing to point out is uh, cleanliness of kitchen and the fats and oils that can build up around cooktops. Um, it's very good to see a very clean kitchen here. Um, but uh, what we also need to talk about is what, while we've got this clean is that should, you should never leave cooking unattended. Um, saucepans like this, uh, this is in the correct position here. If we're out here like that, um, any of the kids or even yourself could brush past it and spill it. Um, we don't want any fat fires as a result of that, so saucepan the handle should be turned in like that. Um, in relation to whether you actually get a fire here or not, the best way to attack that is with a fire blanket. Good to see you've already got yours here. So if this was flaming, um, the fires uh, from a fat could actually be out this far potentially or even up into the hood here. So um, the first thing that you should do, uh, if possible, is grab your blanket, get it out of its case, unfold it completely and make sure that you're grabbing these handles on the inside of the blanket. So those handles will protect your hands from the radiant heat and from the flame. Uh, then when you've got the handles together, walk over to where the fire is, lay the blanket over and smother it completely. And just wait there for the fire to die down. And what do we do then, kids? Call the fire brigade. And what's the number? Triple O. Triple o. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is the appliances that you might have in your kitchen. Um, what's important here is the location of these appliances and any combustibles that might be around them, particularly uh, windows and curtains. And I can see where you've got them here is, is quite remotely away from those, and that's good. Um, the next thing we want to talk about, though, uh, about appliances is the cords and the switches that they're plugged into. Now, electrical starts are one of the main uh, causes of fires within the home, and so it's very important that these, these wires are insulated, like you see here, and that insulation is consistent around the wires. So we don't want any frayed wires or any exposed ends. Uh, the other thing that we want to make sure of too is that we're plugged into a, a power point and we're not doing lots of double adapters or anything like that. Um, the uh, safety switches that are within your house, not all existing homes have them, so it's a good thing to invest in safety switches to make sure if there is any break in that insulation or there's something wrong with the switch that the power gets shut off quickly. Um, so that's about all we've got to talk about in the kitchen. The only other thing that I would mention to you when you're doing any cooking any time, if you're uh, wearing clothing that uh, is, is loose, that's not a good idea because we don't want any of those combustibles anywhere near heat sources where they may ignite. So tight fitting clothing, perhaps an apron or something like that, and if you're rolling up your sleeves cooking a really hearty dinner for the family, then that's a good thing too. One in four childhood incidents in the home actually involve burns. And one of the main reasons for those burns is children playing with matches. Do you have any matches in your home? Sure, but we keep them up high and out of reach, just up here. Okay, that's terrific. Excellent. So kids, what happens if you find some matches in, a, in the house? What do you do? You need to it up. up. Terrific. So we've looked at the hot spots in the kitchen. You're going very well here at the moment, but I'd just like to point out that uh, I think we might have caught you out. Tea towels in front of an oven like this is probably not the best idea because of the heat that could be coming out of the oven. So if this seal behind the door here was to, was to break down at any stage uh, and the heat was coming out, then uh, potentially the tea towels could ignite. So the best idea is to take them off the oven and put them back into the cupboard. Thanks, Matt. So we all know how important smoke alarms are to fire safety. Uh, what is important, though, is that these smoke alarms, when you install them, comply with the Australian standard, which is AS3786. So when you're purchasing your smoke alarms, be sure to check on the packaging that this Australian standard is referenced. The location of the smoke alarms is also important, and that's what we're going to talk about here, but why do you think smoke alarms are important in the home, kids? Because you can't smell smoke when you're sleeping. That's right. So smoke alarm is really helping to alert you to the fact that there's a fire in your home, even if you're asleep. So once we've got the smoke alarms in the home, it's important to make sure that they're maintained. There's two ways of doing this. One is by testing that the battery power is OK and also um, by vacuuming the smoke detector covering itself to make sure that when there is smoke in the environment, it actually can get into the detector to be detected. 
So I'll just demonstrate here with a household broom how you can check with the test button that's on all smoke detectors. Okay, so you heard that beep there, that means the battery is operating and it's fine. Um, and you'd also know that battery should be replaced when daylight saving turns over. Now, uh, we also have a vacuum cleaner here just so I can demonstrate to you how you should be uh, removing the dust from your smoke detector. So just with uh, any type of vacuum cleaner, make sure you've got this attachment uh, fitted. Go up and clean around the venting on the smoke detector. So we can make sure that the sensors inside the detector actually detect the smoke when it's supposed to. I see you've got a smoke alarm up here and uh, that's in a good spot. Uh, what's important is that it's free from any obstructions to smoke uh, so that the alarm will go off as soon as possible. Um, two other things to keep in mind is that uh, where your smoke alarm is should be uh, outside of sleeping areas. So if you have two separate sleeping areas in the house, say, you should perhaps consider putting two smoke alarms in. But if you've got any queries about the regulations of where you should actually install them, I suggest that you speak to your local council. Everything that we've talked about today and identifying your hotspots are actually contained in uh, your home fire safety brochure that CFA produces. What a good looking family. Yes, they do seem very familiar, don't they? <laughs> um, once you've identified the hotspots that we have, the, the last important point of the guide is to uh, develop your home fire escape plan. So this just tears out of the back of the guide. Um, and the idea of the home fire escape plan is to uh, draw an outline of your home. That's it. On the back or on the front, doesn't matter, just so everyone can see it clearly. I see it's got a handy uh, fridge magnet. You can keep it uh, displayed on the fridge. Yeah, and that's good to have it in a prominent location in the house where everyone knows where it is and what they're supposed to do in an emergency. So the critical points on the plan, though, are to make sure that you have an outline of the house and that you know at least two exit routes from each room in the house. Um, also, you need to make sure that your family knows the plan uh, and they know how to use it in an emergency and, and you maintain that knowledge. Okay, so in the winter months, obviously, people like to dry their clothes inside because uh, it's a bit hard to outside. Um, I notice here that you've got the, the clothes in the vicinity of the, the ducted heating down there. Um, that's actually not so bad because your ducted heating is going to provide that heat to it. But what I wouldn't recommend would be uh, if you had a radiant-style heater um, that uh, is portable and putting those next to the clothes. You should always keep that about a metre away from the clothes because uh, the heat from those, we certainly don't want these clothes igniting in the house. Another common fire hazard in the home that people don't often think of is clothes dryers. Um, a lot of heat's generated in uh, drying the clothes, but also uh, most clothes dryers will have a filter to catch any lint. And it's very important that after uh, every uh, cycle of the dryer that you remove the lint and clean the filter because uh, this uh, this lint is obviously uh, very fine and can uh, catch fire easily. So. Make sure that you uh, clean the filter after every cycle, put it back in and also you might want to clean any of the lint that's around the door uh, but after taking the lint out you also want to make sure that the, the dryer has finished its cool down cycle before you leave the home. Um, make sure that the heat has totally uh, left the dryer. Another hazard found in homes is flammable liquids. Um, the storage of items such as mineral turpentine, uh, petrol, kerosene uh, or uh, methylated spirits. It's important to make sure that those items are away from heat sources uh, and pilot flames and stored appropriately. Alright, so what's important to remember, if there is a fire in your house and your clothes catch on fire, there's three things that you need to do. Stop, drop and roll. Okay, so do you think we can demonstrate those now? Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Start, jump, Terrific. <laughs> okay, so if there is a fire in your house, okay, it's important that when you're following the exit route that you get down nice and low because the smoke from the fire will be coming down, filling up the room. We want to make sure we're not breathing in the smoke, okay? So we go out the exit route that we, we know from the plan and we get towards the door. Now, it's important to feel the door with the back of your hand, just like that and make sure it's not too hot. If it's not too hot, then we can keep going through the door, but if it is, we need to look for an alternative exit. Okay? So if you're in your bedroom, the alternative exit might be the window. Okay? So we need to keep low and move over towards the window. That's it. That's right. Keep your head down out of the smoke. Okay? We've prepared the plan. 
and in the plan that you guys have identified that the letterbox will be the place where you assemble. So if you did have a fire in the house, this is where you'd all come down to, which is great. What you need to do is make sure everyone's here and then wait for the fire brigade to attend. So if I identified the hot spots in your house today, you've got a plan, just make sure you maintain it and keep using it. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so that's our look at fire safety in the home today. I hope you've learned something. If you need any further information, you can get yourself a copy of this guideline, uh, Your Home Fire Safety, available from CFA. Uh, there's two ways to contact us. Via our website, www.cfa.vic.gov.au, or you can give us a call on 9262 8444.